Here you stole the shower from Lisa today. That's a lie. I really needed this after COVID, man. Currently 6.15. We're supposed to all be in the lobby. David Pettivar here at Titan Sound Edmonton. I'm very excited. Yeah. If you see the stage, it looks amazing. Slant 6 started out ball 2015. Did you know my mind? Yeah, we all gotta we all gotta say, but it usually comes down to Joe likes it or not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then it goes from there. I've been traveled basically ten years straight Always. until COVID, and then I stopped. And now I'm I've been in Canada longer now than ever since 2010. We have another great show lined up for you tonight, so don't go anywhere. Stay right where you are. We'll be right back. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Robert D'Alessio, and I'm the host of Rob's Inner Circle, broadcasting live from Montreal, Canada. Thank you to each and every one of you for tuning in to what is going to be an absolutely fantastic show. We got a great guest on our show tonight. We have a big shout out going out to the producer of Rob's Inner Circle, none other than the amazing Jenny Duhame. Uh, we also have a shout out going out to the podcast techie here in Rob's Inner Circle, Patty, Ladies, Starlight, Sarah, Gosa. Thank you so much, girls, for being there and for making this show as good as it is. We have a couple of announcements, and these, these items here are making the news here in Rob's Inner Circle. Join us once again in the fight for men's health. Team Captain Mo Jen is on the move and has already clocked in 18 kilometers out of the 16 kilometers that she has vowed to walk throughout the month of November, and we have already raised $116. Thanks to all of those who have already donated to our team. This year, we join forces with the, the big records label, Rise Up TV, and the Noon Hour Out of the Box teams. Join us in the fight at Team ID 2414447, big records label, ca.movember.com. Our producer, Jenny Duhame, participated as a protagonist in the wonderful documentary titled Fissure, directed by Eli Jean Tachy, Sandra J. Mathieu, and Pierre Villepé, in collaboration with Inès. A viewing will be taking place this Thursday at the Cinémathèque Québécoise at 7 p.m. during the RIDM Festival. This documentary, Fissure, just won the best short film at the Prix Ferrel Festival, located in Neuchâtel, Switzerland. Congratulations to all, and a shout out, personal shout out to you, Jen, who participated in the film. You did such a wonderful job. I had a chance to watch Fissure a while back, and you did a great job, like always. After a year of renovation, and trains and tribulations, Rob's in a Circle past guest Mike McCavin's Music on Main in Huntsville, Ontario, Canada, will finally open its doors tomorrow at 7 a.m. Congratulations to you, Mike, and we wish you the very, very best with your store. Well, if you didn't know about it, you're going to know about it now. It's Caregivers Week. It's a National Caregivers Week. And we invite you to cultivate our gratitude towards these amazing people who are devoted to patients' health and well-being. 
On behalf of myself, Jenny and Patty and the rest of the world, thank you very much for being there. Well, I know a thing or two about caregiving because my sweetheart and our podcast techie on our show here, Patty, are both caregivers. And while we're at it, to each of you, we want to give you a personal shout out. Thank you, Patty. And thank you, sweetie, for all the great work you're doing and taking care of all these people who are in need. The Noon Hour Out of the Box podcast that I so proudly host with Esther B. Slash Esther Berzinski is now available on Access Internet Radio. Tune in every Saturday between noon and 3 p.m. That's the Noon Hour Out of the Box podcast on accessradio.ca. The Daily Struggles sitcom is up and rising on Rise Up TV on the Roku streaming service. That's right. <laughs> Roku streaming service. It's a great show if you want to get a good laugh, good old-fashioned comedy. And, uh, and it's such a different show. It is so special. I don't want to give away too much, right? So we invite you to go on to Roku on Rise Up TV and go watch this amazing show. You're going to love it. All of the Robs in a Circle merchandise is readily available at 514brandyco.com. And we have some amazing items on there, collectible items, such as coffee mugs. We got T-shirts. We got pillows. We got blankets. You name it, it's all there. That's 514brandyco.com for all of the merchandise pertaining to Rob's Inner Circle. We invite you to visit the Bobby Short Shorts YouTube channel. Click onto the playlists, go watch our productions, and notably, Rob's Inner Circle. Give us some great comments you want to share. You want to hit that subscribe button. Subscribe to the Bobby Short Shorts YouTube channel. And, of course, you want to hit that notification bell because you will be the first to know every time there is a new production coming out. Well, folks, it's that time once again. It's that time to let out the steam. It's our weekly ritual, folks. We're ready for showtime. Kick your feet up on the edge of the table. Take a deep breath. Exhale. And stay tuned for a really, really great show. Our guest is absolutely amazing. He is a star. He's a star attraction tonight here in Rob's Inner Circle. You're all going to fall in love with him instantly. He's a very talented man. He's a musician, notably a bass player. He is the creator of Rise Up TV on the Roku streaming service, and he's the creator of Big Records Label. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to you live from Pitt Meadows in beautiful British Columbia, Canada, here is tonight's star attraction, Mr. Mark Rosner. Mark. My God. Wow, 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 wow. That was amazing, Robert. I'm thinking, who is he talking about? Well, oh. you know what? I, I was trying to round up the, you know, the end of the month. So maybe that check is going to be coming in the mail after all. <laughs> the mail? I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> Electronic yeah. transfer will do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Robert. Uh, you're just an amazing man and, and all the team you've got there. Uh, are amazing people. I've known you for a while now, and I'm a big fan of all of what you're doing, not only in the broadcast world, but just in life. You're, you're one of those people that brings something fantastic to the table, and, and boy, we can use that in the world right now. Well, Mark, that is so kind of you. Thank you so much. Yes, we do work hard, and like I said at the beginning of the show, it's thanks to the wonderful ladies I have working with me. Uh, both here on the show on Rob's Inner Circle, and they're also my co-stars on a show that we have on Roku TV, on the Rise of TV, the channel Daily, Daily Struggles. Struggles. Mark, let's get to know you because we know this hour does have only 22 minutes. It does go by fast. So, Mark, let's mm -hmm. get down to business. The Mark, the name Rosner, it sounds German. You have some kind of a German background. Is that correct, Mark? Yes, uh, I think long many years ago, I think the the, the full name would be Rosnorov, which uh, leads me to believe it's Prussian up in the top part there. Be you know before Poland, uh, up in the Warsaw area, Germans, but living in in Warsaw area, 
And uh, that's where that comes from. So now it's just Rosner or Rosner. We're not really sure. You mentioned off air that when you were watching the movie Schindler's List, I mean, there were more Rosners in there than anything else. No, it's true. So, are some of these people related to you? I, I do believe so, because <laughs> not only if you look at the credits at the end there, the, there was that group, Schindler's List, but there's Fisher's all through there as well, F-I-S-C-H-E-R, which is my other side of the family. Fisher and Rosner was the two. And and uh, and the, even the book Schindler's List, it was fascinating too. Now, our, our family records were destroyed after 1943 or 44 when they were looking, you know, to find the Jews, so to speak. Um, and uh, so we don't have records. Um, I believe it was before that. Uh, so, but we, we strongly, um, we, we have good, you know, records, uh, privately through, you know, some of the other areas that we, that we are able to, uh, to, to find. And, and so, yes, it, it was interesting because that kind of hit me from the side of the head, you know, just watching Schindler's list and, and seeing all the Rosners and the Fishers, uh, throughout that whole movie. So that was amazing. So that was a pretty proud moment in your life, uh, Mr. I'm Moore. glad we were on the right side <laughs> of it because, to, well, to be honest, to be fully honest, um, there is some things in our family that, that are, I'm not proud of uh, during oh. that time. And, uh, and I was able to, uh, two of my, um, two of my, I guess it would be my, my grandfather's brothers were enlisted in the Gestapo. Uh, oh. And uh, they were Gestapo members. Now, um, my grandfather escaped all of that and came to Canada before it happened. And so there's some things in there. And that's what makes me very, very sensitive to some of the things that are happening today. Mark, you were born in New Westminster, British Columbia in Canada, because I'm going to be a little bit more precise because we have a worldwide audience, uh, Mark. A lot of people tuning in from Australia, some from Japan, sure. uh, other ones are from South America, even Mexico. So, Mark, you were born in New Westminster, Minster, <laughs> B.C., British Columbia. And uh, we also have a little anecdote here. Our producer says that she remembers eating the best Texas donuts and meat creeps at the Key. Is that nearby Westminster, by the way? I don't know if it's called meat creeps. Uh, that that sounds a little sketchy, doesn't it? A, a new show on on one of those sketchy panels. Uh, but no, meat creeps. Interesting. The new Westminster Key. Yeah, there's a key in North Vancouver and in new westminster where there's you can just walk through this big market and tons of seafood and just interesting stuff to look at it's all fresh right in front of you and that those are fun to go to i haven't had what jenny's talking about there but i may have to now <laughs> well you know the, let us know uh, when you have those meat creeps and you could probably like put a comment back on the show hey by the way they were so good yeah i'll do it yeah we will get on that tomorrow so as you were growing up, Mark, what were your aspirations as a, a young man, you know, going into, let's say, from your early years as you were progressing into your teens, what were your inspirations at the time? Well, I was brought up in the church, in the Baptist church. And so my the, the way I look at life, the way I see things for the first 15 years, 20 years was in the Baptist and the Pentecostal church. And I was also a lover of music. And uh, but I, I couldn't decide. Uh, I loved football. I played football every day, hockey, football, all these things. And and then eventually I had to choose because I had a scholarship opportunity to play at Simon Fraser University. Um, and I had to make a choice. What do I want? Football, music? Well, I chose music. So there you go. Um, was it the best choice? Yes. You know why? Because when you're following your heart, uh, instead of money or anything like that when you're following your heart it will lead you to an authentic life and that's what i have so you were born in 1967 yeah just three years before the vancouver canucks made their entry into the national hockey league with the buffalo sabers right and it's been glorious uh, and i remember i just used to love those uniforms that canucks had it was that it was i love the colors by the way the pacific blue with the white trim and the green 
And it was a skidding ring with that hockey stick. That was one of the best uniforms. Why out don't there. they stay with that stuff? Yes. Why? Why not? What's the need to have all this other stuff come in? You know. And at one point, uh, when they had changed to the yellow uniforms, it was like a V. Remember, they had the yeah. uh, uh, yellow uniforms at home and the black uniforms away. Yeah. And I just was so saddened when I had seen that. Well, then there's, there's then fish got involved, you know, uh, <laughs> and, and you know, and, and it just it, well, it's like a lot of things, you know. I'm me, maybe I'm 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 sounding like an old fart, but <laughs> I love tradition. I love tradition. Why not leave them the same way? Why not? I remember when uh, they were yellow, uh, those uniforms I was talking about, and I remember the moment Mark Messier. Came to the Canucks. Oh. They had to change that uniform with that letter C. And they had that aquatic animal on it. Mark, it just doesn't make the cut. Just keep the well, skating. You know, for, keep the skating. Right the anything, you know, if I can just give a thought on that whole thing, Mark Messier, and uh, what's his name, uh, coach there uh, of the Rangers. Oh, uh, yeah, Glenn Sather. No, 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 no. It's the other guy uh, that no one likes. Anyways, he's coaching the Rangers with Mark Messier. They beat the Canucks in 19, 1994. It was just it was horrible to lose that way. Yes. Just so close. Yes. There was a there was, a, there was a, a crossbar or a post with three seconds or three yes. minutes left. And and then to bring that guy and Messier to the Canucks, and then to strip Trevor Linden of his captaincy and put Mark Messier as the captain, the most humiliating BS. Wow being a Canucks fan, we do not want to see, I'll remember that guy's name uh, before the end of the day. Uh, he became uh, the coach of the Canucks. And Neil, we, Neil, Neil something. Uh, no, that you know, why? I don't know why. It, I got his face in my in my head and I can't remember it right now, but everybody will probably know and remember that. Why bring the enemy to coach your team? Yeah, exactly. And that is insult to injury. Some people just don't have any pride, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> So, Mark, let's talk about your music career. How is it that you got into music? Uh, well, going way back, it was um, when I was 13 years old. I, I watched my brother playing the bass up at, in front of the church, and I thought that was really noble and a really cool thing to do. And my brother was one of the, the biggest influences in my life. So I began to practice playing the bass. And the idea was is to impress my brother. And I began to make it my own. So I love to play. I mean, I would play day and night. You know, I would go to sleep, um, or so my mom thought. Uh, she, <laughs> you know, the light would go off, and I'm in, uh, you know, I knew it would take her a while to, once the door closed, she would go upstairs, and then I'd wait, you know, an hour. And then I'd get up, and I would I had my bass and my headphones, and i plug into my Ghetto Blaster. You know, remember Ghetto Blasters? Oh, yeah, the Sony uh, radios. Yeah, so I turned up the, uh, the, 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 the bass. Mark, we have the answer. Is that him? No, that's not Roger Nielsen. No, it's, no, it's um, Mike, uh, it, coach of the Rangers for the Stanley Cup. Okay, you know what? Uh, folks, we have a great audience out there. They participate a lot. Dear audience, we invite you. Can you look this up for us and put us on the screen? I'll, I'll give look you a chance my... to participate. Uh, uh, exactly. Uh, and, and Mark, 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 we're going to lose all this beautiful time. Mike Keenan, there Mike you go. Keenan. Yes, yes. Chris. Chris <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Chris is a great <laughs> artist uh, in uh, Vernon, BC here. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. Mike Keenan. Oh, my yes. gosh. Okay. Yeah. Why would we want him coaching the Canucks and then have Messier on there? And then – um, and then to demote Trevor Linden, our beautiful Trevor Linden down. You know. Yeah. So anyways, enough of that. Uh, so we lost a bit of our train of thought over here, over the excitement, over our national sport, <laughs> hockey. Wow. <laughs> Mark, are you, okay, you're a musician, you play instruments and all that, and you have this taste for music. Um, are you producing other artists' material? Uh, the answer is no. You know, with with getting into the business side of music it, and having a family, it's uh, it, it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and I'm just not in the position where I can do that. Because um, when I get into producing, when I get into playing music and writing songs and stuff, I got I go crazy. I I, I don't shave. I stay up till four in the morning. <laughs> uh, you know, it's just it becomes that's the artist side of me. So I had to turn that off. 
I had to enjoy um, living through my artists and uh, people around me, that, that music side of things. You play bass, but you also play other instruments, maybe such as the guitar? Yeah, just enough to produce. I like songwriting. Um, I do have I do have a song that I've been working on with a, a group of friends of mine that we're going to release fairly soon. Um, it's about uh, John Lennon and all oh. of the songs that he did not have the chance to write. Imagine the amazing things that John Lennon would have written. And so we have um, a song coming out, uh, going to be on Sony Orchard fairly soon, and a little video with it called Dear John, and that's coming soon. Well, now that you said that John Lennon, and if you'll pardon the pun, this is just too easy, Mark. Uh oh, John Lennon, imagine <laughs> all of the things, <laughs> you know, yeah. like you were saying. Yeah. John Lennon actually has a song. Well, it's interesting that you say that because when, when I thought of what the song should be called, I came up with Dear John. And then uh, I worked with my, my friends, uh, Don Hart and Sean Morse and uh, Dominique Bernath on um, creating lyrics that made reference to Beatles songs. So there's the word imagine in there. There's, you know, um, a bunch of different Beatles songs references in the actual lyrics. So you play bass guitar and the bass guitar is quite an, in an, an interesting instrument because it isn't like a guitar, you know, you can play over a campfire an acoustic guitar, it's such, it's so different. It's a more of a percussionary accompanying instrument. Um, are you one of the odd basses that can actually make music just with a bass? You know, when I started playing the bass, I wanted to take it to a different place. So um, I started doing hammer-ons. I started to doing harmonics. I started oh. writing songs with tapping, you know, uh, both hands. Um, when, you know, when I didn't have an, an amplifier close, I would put the, the head of the guitar up against the stud on the wall and it would oh. reverberate through the house and you could hear the bass. You didn't need an amp, right? That is amazing. Wow. Yeah. So, so um, I've always been about doing things a little different in my whole life. And uh, for the, to the chagrin of my father uh, for a long time, you know, but before he passed away, he did say, you know, I'm very proud of what you've done. And uh, he wanted me to go into other more stable areas. And boy, I'll tell you, looking at the way the world is right now, uh, music might be the most stable place to be. Funny as it may seem, yes, I agree with you. <laughs> Bizarre, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Mark, how many uh, bands have you been in? Um, I, I got my start really, um, I was playing in a, in a band, uh, one time, you know, when I was about 17 or 18, and uh, I was discovered by a band called Titus, which Titus comes from a book in the Bible, uh, but uh, it was a, a fellow named John Markin uh, came out and saw me and, and plucked me out of that band and brought me into Titus. And then we went to uh, Europe and traveled and uh, I got a lot of my experience there learning from John uh, how to how to how to be in a band, you know, um, how to have your place. And, and, uh, uh, so we had tons of good memories. We, our, our album was produced by Bob rock, who was not the Bob rock at that time. He was, um, that was pre Metallica for Bob rock. That was, uh, was it, what the, that would be about 1984 or 83. Uh, but Bob, uh, uh, we were managed by Bob Brooks who owned little mountain sound studios in Vancouver. And, um, and so, um, that was short-lived, I guess, for only about two, three years. Um, things happen in bands, you know. Uh, and people have kids and they move away and this and that. And so then I started my own band, Envoy, and did some touring there. Um, that was a lot of fun, uh, those years. Uh, but again, I hit about 30 and decided I needed to start doing some other things. And, um, you know... So I went in a different direction for a while. I started my my company, Rosner Management Services, about nine years ago. So I'd have been about 44, and I made a change. I had tried the world out, you know, and just never felt right. I needed to be in music. And so I chose to go back to music at 44. Can you believe that? <laughs> and, and, and it was a lot of years of finding and learning, learning what – but I, again – 
I never really wanted to follow anybody. I wanted to lead. I wanted to find a new way. And so it was very timely because the music business was changing before our eyes. And while people were looking at how we can get the glory years back, I was thinking, no, they're gone. Let's make something new. And that's what led me to do what I'm currently doing. So tell the audience how your church reacted when you were playing in that rock band, oh, Christian rock band. Yeah. You came in with the long hair yeah. and the leather and you raised a few eyebrows. So tell us about what it is uh, exactly that happened when you walked into that church. Yeah. So back back then, um, it was pretty controversial. Um, but um, I, my influences when I got into the church, like I have, I have all the, the the usual influences, the Beatles or you know whatever, the Stones or, um, but. There was a whole sort of subculture of Christian music with Petra, the Resurrection Band, Larry Norman, uh, Keith Green, just beautiful music. If you haven't heard it before, my goodness, there's a whole group of things that you're missing. Uh, so, but as it went along, um, I, um, I I developed interest in rock and whatnot and, and uh, began to have to look the part, I think, a little bit. So... Uh, one of the funniest memories I have looking back, because it embarrasses me right now, um, but uh, there's a place in Vancouver, or Burnaby actually, it's called Willingdon Church, and it's 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 as big as a Coliseum now. Uh, but we had this band co come up called the Allies from the States, and they were a Christian rock band. And I remember filling this place up to 2,500 people, and, and, and our band walked in. Um, and I was in long blonde hair. I had the earring. I had a bass guitar earring. Okay. okay. And, uh, and, you know, I was about 185 pounds soaking wet. And, uh, and so I walk in with this long cape, and this black cape. I look like a vampire. So it's a little bit weird. <laughs> right? But, I, but one thing I always said was I'm going to be my authentic self. I'm not going to take um, what other people think is okay. I'm going to be me. And so I walked up there. I remember walking down the aisle. I knew what people were thinking. What does this guy think he's doing? And that was wow. me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mark, you're a genius. You're an entrepreneur, a great entrepreneur, just like Pamela um, Tozer Harbottle commented before. You're a musician, and you're also the creator of Rise Up TV channel. So tell us how you came about creating Rise Up TV and what the whole concept behind it is. Well, I have to tell you how it began. Um, I did a market tester about six years ago, uh, seven, maybe seven years ago. Uh, I came up with an idea to bring people of all different genres, ages, uh, you name it together, artists, onto a bus, 56 passenger bus, a huge bus. And they didn't know each other. And they were all different genres. And I invited them all to Vancouver. We all started there. And we went each night. We went to play a show together. There was about 15 total groups playing two songs each. <laughs> and we, we went to one city. And then we, we'd go to the next city and the next city. And we'd stay in hotels. And the whole thing lasted a week in Western Canada. Then I did it in Eastern Canada. I went from uh, Toronto right through to Halifax. We did the same thing there. And I remember the first day when people arrived. I got on the bus and there's all these artists of different types. You had like a 19 year old hip hop guy sitting next to a 65 year old country crooner. And then you had a band singing Sweet Home Alabama on their guitar, this and that. And I walked on the first day, I walked up and down the aisle and it was completely silent. People were wondering what the hell they got themselves into. <laughs> and I have to tell you, by day three, they were all best friends. So we had brought this group of people together and toured. And by the end of the week, they were all lifelong friends. Now, you know, I spend about 100000 of my own money, so I can't do that all the time. But I realized at the end of that, that this was a television show. Indeed, everything that happened. There was a guy uh, named Mary's, there was a band called Mary's Guns on that tour. And it was four guys, really made an impression. One of the guys lost his father while they were on the road. So, you know, um, I said, do you want to go home? 
He said, no, my dad would want me to finish the tour. So they finished the tour. But later that night, I remember being woken up in my hotel room uh, about 3.30, 4 in the morning. And, hey, you better come down here. Somebody's one of your people is naked and he's running around the hotel. He just jumped into the pool. And so that turned out to be that guy. I mean, he had gotten drunk and he was, but we all knew what was going on. And we all became his friends after that. And so going forward about three years, I decided that this needed to be a television show and I had to begin to um, pull that together. Uh, what do you need for a television show? And the television show led to, okay, let's get onto Roku and let's get onto, um, now we're beyond Roku. So we're negotiating a, a large television deal right now for many networks around the world. But it's been a long journey. And the idea is, in short, if it can be, um, artists have become somewhat irrelevant to the general public. You know, when I look back in 1984, when Van Halen came out with a new single, um, the whole school stopped. They rolled a television uh, set into the classroom and we watched the debut. You know, fast forward to now, the public don't seem to care too much about music. What they need is they need to know who you are as a person. So let's bring the people, the artists, their personality to the people worldwide on the television. Have them fall in love with or maybe they hate love, whatever. Then they can discover the music from there. That's the concept of Rise Up TV. And that's very brilliant. It's very smart. In fact, your tour is growing so much that you're talking, uh, I believe you have plans to go worldwide. Is that right, Mark? Yeah. So if you remember Anthony Bourdain, his program was interesting. He would go into uh, countries and experience the food and the people and see the, the wonderful geography. Um, that's similar to Rise Up because although we're in Canada, U.S., um, doing those tours. We're, we're about to head out to Vancouver Island, uh, sponsored by Nanaimo Tourism. We are going from Victoria, Nanaimo, Campbell River, Port Alberni, and then up to beautiful Tofino and Ukulele. And that's one week. And then we're also, uh, so that's starting November 23rd to 27th. You know, our tickets are on big bigrecords.world uh, is our website. That's the record company, and you can find Rise Up TV tab right there, and you can buy tickets to go see those shows. So we're we're creating all of the behind-the-scenes stuff of the people. And then we're also doing Eastern Canada. We're doing uh, Windsor, London, Hamilton, uh, Ottawa, and Montreal, in which case you will be there. And we're doing that. But we're also doing um, the USA. Uh, so our plans are for... Um, We've got Atlantic City coming up in 2022. We've got Western, like Seattle down to LA with Las Vegas, Reno, all of that stuff. We've got Mexico in May. We're going to do Rise Up Mexico. And we've got the UK, Germany coming up uh, August, September. And wow. my plans, actually, we've got plans for India and Cambodia as well. That's uh, beautiful. Yeah, that my dream is to have this to hit every continent in the world and have it be a... a um, a really interesting, you know, uh, show to watch with interesting people and the, the, the world geography. So how many shows are presently airing on Rise Up TV right now, Mark? Uh, we've got um, the Rise Up TV episodes, uh, four episodes up there currently. We've got Daily Struggles up there. We've got Meet Me for Coffee. And the plan is, is to revamp that in 2022 and expand it greatly. Uh, for with new programming as well as updated programming and there'll be more networks coming on uh, as well and you know I, I have to mention I cannot forget to mention a wonderful company that's besides Nanaimo Tourism which we're really excited about out here in Vancouver Island and I'm thankful for um, I, I have to mention uh, 64 Audio and the reason I do is uh, 64 Audio are a incredibly professional um, company, the best in-ear monitors and other products that you can find uh, anywhere. And they have been a partner of ours. They got a hold of the vision um, 
a, a year or so ago, and they have just been incredibly helpful. And we we ride their bus actually around everywhere. You'll see the sixty four audio bus, and we just we just had a ton of people in there, uh, and you can sleep uh, up to fourteen in those in these things. Uh, wow. it's, it's incredible, and uh, and and so just a party on wheels, and um, you know, so again, just making sure that that I um, you know thank. The, when you talk about the tours and stuff, there's so many people to thank, you know, I can't name them all. Right. It's just, it would take up too much time. People have, have gotten a hold of this vision and are just jumping on and, and making it great beyond what I, what I could. Uh, but, but, you know, Sony Orchard is now on board for distribution for our, our record company. Um, That's amazing. And, and I, I can't thank our team enough. I'm not going to name, the team because I'll forget somebody. It's that for cool. sure. <laughs> it's but, like that. But let me tell you, the the girls and guys that I have partnering up with this and working every day to help the artists with service and to build this, it really makes it special. And you know, we we are on the, the brink of some big sponsorship for 2022. And I won't mention anything uh, particular right here, uh, but it's it's coming. And but please uh, keep us informed because we like to backtrack on our past guests and you know just for the development and the evolution of things please let us know we'll be more than happy to put this up on our show i appreciate that robert and i will support your show as much as i can because uh, the more we get to know about your dream and your goal that's what i want to do well we wanted to give the audience just a little bit of a taste of, uh, of some of the content that is uh, well we, we chose one of the shows and i guess mark you know it, you're going to see why I chose I chose a particular clip. And uh, for those of you who are who have always wondered, because Patty and Jenny work with me on the show over here, well, you're going to get to see what they actually look like. So here's a little excerpt of one of the shows that you have playing on Rise Up TV. My name is Haman Ha. Hello. Did you live here too? We live in 116. Yeah, yeah. So red. They have a party here. Sella, come on, get out of there. Oh, I love it. Oh, my name is Lolita Fernandez. Lolita, I like that name. I'm Mexican. No way. Well, today is your lucky day, honey. You know why? Yeah. I know some uh, Spanish words. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> I always get a reaction when I say this one. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, Yo soy muy Carmine? What are you doing? I'm a car expert. You are? Wait till you see the interior of this baby. Oh yeah. Right here, baby. I picture myself doing something else right here. You're a real bad girl. Mm, I am. I do want it. You don't even know her! That's the way to talk to a man. Shut up! Why are you doing selling cars to my clients here on my lot? Yeah, exactly. What are you doing selling cars on his lot? I'm just trying to be helpful. You don't work here, man. Like the nervous of me. Never mind. Mm -hmm. That shirt. I do not remember you having the shirt. I can help you in the future. The future. Really? Lolita Fernandez. Of course, Carmine comes to the rescue of the damsel in distress. You're always doing stupidity. There we go, your jealousy again, huh? You're so embarrassing sometimes. Huh? Hey, for a lady, what would I not do? I get a kick of watching. Oh my god! <laughs> I recognize somebody from there. Well, well, uh, there you go, folks. Patty is the one yelling at me, and mm -hmm. Jenny was, was the one inside the Hummer. <laughs> my gosh! We had we have such great fun with that show. And by the way, folks, uh, we are filming right now uh, the uh, season two. We're in filming, so we didn't forget you. We're out there working hard. Yeah, it takes it takes a bit of time, doesn't it, to. to move things along in these processes so mark tell us how did you come up with the whole concept the idea of calling 
your channel Rise of TV. Why did you call it Rise of TV? Well, uh, you know, it is interesting how I came about with that because when you are a visionary, um, it doesn't mean you can see everything, you know, before it happens. But, but I think when you go with your heart and your authentic self, I think you, uh, you can create something that, you know, piece by piece. So I, I originally, you know, our logo is, um, you know, a hand with a, a microphone, you know, coming up out of the rubble of the old music business. And so it started there. Uh, that was one part of it. Um, then, then Rise Up took on a different, uh, more, more, um, you know, pieces of the puzzle came in, and I started noticing that Rise Up really meant to me like rising up out of your circumstances. What, what are you having to overcome? And that's worldwide. So we got into working with, um, you know, um, Autism Canada on, on some things, and um, then there became other, you know, groups that that you know. Um, we started to work with and and it became more about rising up out of circumstances and i think with covid and everything i think um it really gives us an opportunity um to rise up out of whatever circumstances we have in our lives and that's what it means so it's different to different people so that's kind of a, a quick synopsis so the rise of tv show is totally unscripted and that, that's what makes it a lot of fun and so unpredictable because anything can happen. I love that concept. But is there a reason why you chose to have that that way? Interesting. I don't. I didn't want a documentary. Um, you know, sort of boring questions and this kind of thing. I didn't want a Kardashian type show. You know, I wanted the reality of what it's like being out on the road. And so every time we go out on the road. The personalities come out and that creates the fun. And so it, it's such a, uh, it's such a, uh, a large, uh, endeavor that things go wrong inevitably and how we, how they react or, you know, just all of that is what encompasses in the show. And so we don't really have to script anything. Well, that makes it a whole much more fun. And it gives some of the actors who are maybe, you know, less inclined to have, to learn lines, it gives them a chance as well to shine. And, you know, like we said before, you never know what can happen. No, it's true. And that leads me to thinking the Trailer Park Boys um, and FUBAR are hugely successful cult classics and worldwide Canadian productions. Sure. Have either or or both of these shows influenced in some ways in creating the Rise of TV show? Uh, in all honesty, no. Uh, I I uh, can honestly say I, I have watched uh, some Trailer Park Boys and and uh, I find it kind of funny uh, for sure. Um, Fubar I'm, I I haven't honestly I haven't seen that. Um, but um, no I uh, same with my music when I write music I really like to stay away from heading in a direction of anyone. I I kind of like to let it organically um, grow and that's that's what I've done here. And I find that that creates something unique. And, and so there has been people trying to copy what we're doing along the way. And, and, um, and I'm aware of it. Um, and I want to say to them, you know, just find your own. <laughs> like, like, look inside your heart, find out what me, means something to you and go in that direction. And so I want to keep it very organic. And, and what happens, Robert, is that as you're living in your, your best, um, you know, uh, frame of mind and doing what is true to your heart, those that are belong with you will find their way to you and those that don't belong with you will will be repelled away and that's what happens so recently you formed the big records labels how did that come to be right so seven years of managing and building my art uh, my artists worldwide up to about 70 artists seven zero uh that's a lot um I decided that it was at the point where it had to be a label. It was uh, Sony Orchard was coming on board. Uh, Rise Up is getting to a point where it's got to be a, a just more organized and um, and a label makes more sense. Uh, I did I, I consider it a hybrid label. It's not like a 360 deal. Uh, we provide services. Uh, we help uh, consult. We build every aspect of what an artist needs. Uh, 
beyond just signing, but who are they as people? What do they need in their life? I, I'm, I like to think we can help people move forward in many areas that are not just in the record business. So, um, so that's what we're doing. So it came to that point. So bigrecords.world was formed about three months ago, but it, it always was the goal uh, to get to that level. And so now we're building that. So why is it that you chose the name Big Records? Is it because they're bigger than usual? <laughs> it's a funny story. Um, I, I had made a post on my Facebook and uh, my friend and partner, Jimmy Allen Sign, um, texted me and, and he said, uh, hey, I, I see you came up with a name. What, what, uh, what made you decide that? He was partly wondering, like, hey, you need to talk to me first. And I said, I said, what are you talking about? And he said, well, look at your post there. It says big something. And I said, oh no, Jimmy, it's uh, that that post was was um, from Big Generator, <laughs> and which is a Yes album, a Yes to Big Generator. <laughs> and so it had the words big on it. And then so he started laughing. So oh, okay, I get it. And we both <laughs> stopped. And we went, hey, that's not bad. So then we came up with big records and scoped it out and turns out bigrecords.world was available so we went with it there you go there's the story how many artists are signed with big records presently well we have uh i don't know exactly probably about 20 um and we have another probably 30 uh still on roster management which we're we're moving everything over to big records as we go and uh, then of course we work with artists that are not with us uh, like artists that are on labels like, uh, you know, Ryan Roxy from Alice Cooper and, you know, uh, these kinds of uh, artists. Um, we work with a lot of different signed artists as well and different initiatives. And so Live Nation, all of that. But uh, the artists that are signed to us are up on our site now. Mark, over the years, you've seen things change. I remember back in the 70s, 80s, even the 90s, music was so much different. Right now with the digital age that has made its introduction into the music world music has changed so much how is it that you yourself have seen the change happen um i think there was a lot of um stuff uh 10 years ago maybe people wanting to get the music business back to where it was i just always wanted to look forward not back so um the digital is fine, but what we have to do is get past this, you know, how many fans do I have? How many views I have on YouTube and this and that? That's fine. That's one part of the business, I suppose. But what we have to do is get back to uh, the love of the music and reaching out to the public. And so that's what we're going to focus on. Big Records is much more than just a label. There's much more to it. Uh, which other aspects does Big Records encompass in an artist's life? Right. So so we like to think of our artists as family. And so we have people that actually work directly with each artist on all the different aspects, uh, from distribution to promotion, social media, getting sponsors, doing tours, uh, bookings. Um, even things like TV and film licensing and and um, and things outside of the music business. For example, everything that happens in an artist's life, their personal life affects their music. So, so advice and connections, and you know, we've got artists doing successful in every area. So why not connect this artist with this artist and say, hey, how did you do that? You know, so it's just about information. I really can't stand it when I when I meet people that try to keep all their connections to themselves. I think it's it's about big, building a bigger pie so that everybody can uh, do better. Have you done some acting during your life? Yes. Um, basically, when I stole too many wagon wheels, <laughs> and my my mom said, "Did you take the wagon wheels?" and I said, "No." Um, that's about the extent of my acting career, uh, <laughs> and it, and I wasn't very good. So uh, uh, it's not like I don't. I got a friend uh, who's really doing well in acting and stuff, and some friends. Have, I got some connections. And, you know, for me personally, I think it would be fun someday. But I just find I'm too busy right now. Even you know, this, acting takes a lot of time. You know. So talk to us about the podcast you had. You had the Rise Up podcast. Where was it? A year, year and a half ago. Right. Yeah. Yeah, talk to us about the podcast. Well, it was interesting because 
I, I sort of felt, okay, I got to figure out what this podcast stuff is all about, right? Uh, this was maybe a year and a half ago. Yeah, you're correct. So I thought, ah, you know, in order to understand this, I, I'm going to do one. And so I started a, a podcast and called it Rise Up. But coincidentally, all this COVID stuff started coming in at the same time. <laughs> You know, and so I found myself talking on the podcast about COVID all the time. And I realized it took me a few months to realize, you know, I think I'll shut this down because Rise Up sort of, you know, if I'm going to do a podcast, I, I better do a different name because it's not really about Rise Up. So, um, so I, I did those and they're up there. We've got them up on the Roku and, and I leave them up because, you know, it's a part of my journey. So what you're seeing on Rise Up is my slow acknowledgement of what's going on here there's a there's a virus <laughs> you know so it turned from music <laughs> and everything and and then all of a sudden i found myself talking about this stuff all the time and and that's not what i wanted to do so i shut that down is there anything that you have done in your life that you would do differently um no uh i believe strongly that i have to my own detriment, I've always gone with my heart in life. I've I've made the choices I've made, not for money, not for stardom, power. I've made them out of of truth, how I feel in my heart. And so, I don't regret any of them. I've done some really stupid things looking back, and I wonder where my head was at, but. I don't regret it. The only thing I regret in my life is some of the people that I loved who left. And those are things I can't control. So would I do anything different? How can I? If I've been following my heart, I chose to go into music instead of be a stockbroker or something and make tons of money and that, you know. <laughs> And, uh, but, but I can't, I can't, my personalities, I've got to live my authentic life. Just like I do, we have this in common, you and I, Mark, we're not afraid to listen to our inner voice. And this is something a lot of people have a hard time with because listening to the inner voice sometimes just doesn't make sense when you're analyzing it and you're trying to figure out why you're doing this. That's the thing, Mark. You can't be asking why you're doing something. If your heart is telling you, just go out there and follow your heart. Just like you said moments well, you ago. Know, Robert, I, I'm not afraid to fail. Okay? So uh, if I fail, if you tell me, like, you, you better, well, this has actually happened. You know, my, my father wanted me to do it differently in life. So if I go out there and do it, the way that I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to impress or or do it what I think someone else wants, and I fail at that. I feel ten times worse. So I'm like, I didn't care about this anyway. I don't want to succeed at this. So I'd rather fail doing what I am here to do than succeed at something that I don't care about. Mark Rosner, what would you qualify as the greatest moment of your life? Greatest moment of my life is due um, right with my my son was born. Um, it's an amazing thing to bring someone into the world. Uh, nothing can touch that. So that's number one. Um, I'm I'm proud of a lot of things that I've done, but that's the most meaningful thing ever. Are you invol involved with collaborative uh, church efforts uh, such as charities, events, campaigns, what have you? I have done a lot of that. And sadly, of late, um, I haven't had the time to focus on that. And, and I think if there is uh, charity and whatnot out there that is needing a voice and, and whatnot, I'm open. I'm all ears. Uh, we have worked with different ones in the past, and it's just going through a bit of a lull right now. But I think there's an opportunity, funny you mentioned that, for someone to come on board. Because we're looking to help. We're looking to rise up. We're looking to be a part of the solution in this society. So let's say, Mark, you own the key to the world. You have carte blanche. Whatever Mark says goes. 
What is it that you would do to make this world a better place? No divisiveness. We all are on our own journey. I do my research. I know what's going on. I understand words like eugenics. Okay. I understand we're all on a different path and we're going at different paces. But what we've got to do is stop the divisiveness. That's the key. We've got to find ways to bring, to come together through this time and accept everyone for where they're at and stop dividing because that is what the the people in the world that have an agenda that is not pure, that is not right, that's causing these issues, whatever they are, that's what they want. They want us to divide, to work against ourselves. So let's ignore that. Let's come together, find the places where we are in agreement, and let's go from there. Do you think that we're, we're ever going to go back to normal somehow at some point, maybe in 2022, 23, 2024, are we ever going to go back to normal to the life that we once had, Mark? If, if our belief in freedom and our willingness to fight for it is stronger than the enemy, we will get back to freedom. We will get back to what we call normal. If we don't have the ability to, um, to stand up, and to, and, and again, I say stand up, but I mean the divisiveness is going to remain there unless we find, instead of trying to segregate, okay, you know, I'm, I'm not vaxxed. I'm in a province that does not allow me to go into a restaurant. It does not allow me to go watch my son play hockey. Okay. It's a personal choice right now. And I understand both sides of the argument, but I also understand autonomy of your own body. And when we talk about medical decisions, uh, we have to be careful that we don't go down that road. So are we going to go back to normal? Maybe we can, but maybe old normal wasn't quite right. Maybe there's problems that we can't go back to exactly that. So what we have to do is, again, find the way that we can um, find our, our similar spots that we, that we all believe in and go find those, focus on those, and stop dividing. Technology has come a long way. And you were recounting before we went on the air that there was an incident where you were in a, in a department store and this lady came up to you and said, sir, right over here, uh, the self-serve cash, the cashier. <laughs> and she invited you, you know, to do the, your own cash, cashier work. And your reaction wasn't a very good one. You know, I try to be really respectful for every person because we're all, you know, um, I, I don't believe in masks and that kind of thing, but uh, I, I, I try to just, live my own life right and do what i believe my research that i have done has led me here one of the things i it's i suppose you could just call this um uh, you know old school or something that not everything that we can if invent we should invent right not everything we can invent we should invent and so this is the difference between science you know, science can go all over the place and do whatever. There's no morality to anything. We have to be careful that our scientists aren't running our world. We didn't, we did not, um, we didn't vote for them. You know, we have to have, and this is the, the AI portion that bothers me. I want to, to look in someone's eyes. I want a cashier. Right? Are we? Should we eventually have 
robots doing everything? Well, you know, do, do we need to drive? Do we need to do this? Do we need to do that? Well, hey, I like driving. I don't want some robot taking over my job of driving. I want to take, I want to go for a drive. Uh, I want to go pick out the vegetables in the supermarket. I don't want someone driving it to my house. I, this is what I'm talking about. Not everything that we can invent should we invent it. And so when you start to take the human element out of society, what's left? I don't want that. I'm happy to work with a cashier. A cashier's ha- My mom was a cashier at Safeway her whole life, and it was part of her identity. She got out. She loves the Safeway girls. We go, she goes out with them, all of that. This was a big part of it all. So let's check ourselves how much we want to let science destroy things that have meaning from the past. Are you open to artist submissions at the time? And if so, where is it that they can find you? Uh you know, rosnermanagement at gmail.com, rosnermanagement at gmail.com. We are expanding all the time, growing everywhere. We've got opportunities that I haven't even mentioned for Live Nation things next year and, and trips around the world, everything. It's happening here because we have so many good people on our team. If you're a band, an artist, and you're kind of stuck in the rut, uh, you think maybe, you know, there isn't anything that can be done and everybody's out to just take your money and whatever you're thinking, stop the negativity, do something. We can help you and we are always looking to grow and we have more opportunities than we have artists, believe it or not. Mark, this hour has just flown. Just let this show. It only has 22 minutes. <laughs> So, Mark, what uh, would be your last words of wisdom before we get to sadly sign off? Because this has been an absolutely magnificent show. It was a lot of fun, Mark, having you on. So, Mark, let us have those last words of wisdom. Hmm. Wow, that's tough. I would say good people bring good people. So surround yourself with the best people you can and watch the people come in and your life will explode. Well, Mark, uh, just before we close, we want to make an announcement to the audience. We we are inviting you to get your audience for the Montreal show. Uh, We invite you to show your support. Jenny, myself, and Patty, Esther as well, will be present on that evening. So come and join us. The tickets are only $20. Tickets are available at eventbrite.com. Mark Rosner, you're such a fantastic guest. We got to have you here again. Well, uh, I'm not busy tomorrow. You can throw this together <laughs> again quick. I enjoy talking to you, Robert, and I love all that you're doing. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. Mark, as I said before we went on live, please stand by. I Stay will. behind stage. We're going to have our meet and greet party between me, yourself, Patty, and Jenny. You. So, uh, Mark, thank you once again. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. That was our guest tonight, Mr. Mark Rosner, a musician, a bass player, the creator of the Rise Up TV channel, also the Rise Up TV tour, and he's also the creator of the Big Records label. Stay tuned, folks. This upcoming Wednesday at noon, we have the Noon Hour Out of the Box show hosted by myself and the amazing co-host, Esther B., other, otherwise known as Esther Brzezinski. We're going to be talking about this upcoming Wednesday at noon, polyamory. That's the art of having more than one intimate lover. That's going to be a very interesting show. Stay tuned next week when we have another exciting show. We have uh, a person from the Montreal Alouettes CFL football team by the name of Corey Ramirez. Corey Ramirez is the account executive at the Montreal Alouettes. It's going to be a really good show, very interesting. And we invite you to be here, same time, same place, same reason. So to all of you from all of us, we bid you farewell. And thank you for tuning in to Rob's Inner Circle. Good night.